Hi guys, my name is Courtney Budzen and this is What's For Din. Today is super cloudy out, it's gross, and I just feel like having something comfortable to eat. So I'm gonna be showing you how to make homemade soft pretzels. I'm super excited about this. And at the end, I'm gonna be showing you an amazing cheddar beer dipping sauce that is to die for. Now don't let this freak you out. Soft pretzels are actually super easy to make. Yes, it's a yeast dough, but it's not that difficult at all. If I can do it, anyone can do it. So let's go over the ingredients. So you're gonna need some all-purpose flour, some melted butter, brown sugar, you're gonna need whole milk that's at a temperature of 110 degrees, nothing more than that, nothing less. You're gonna need some active dry yeast, a little bit of uh, regular table salt, and at the end we're gonna need some baking soda and some coarse salt. You can use you know, pretzel salt, they sell it at the store for super cheap, but I'm just using kosher salt today. So the first thing we need to do is activate our yeast. So you wanna make sure your milk is at a good temperature. So mine is at about 110 degrees, which is perfect. So what I'm gonna do is add just a little bit of the sugar because the yeast will feed off of that. And then we're gonna put our package of yeast in. And this should take about five to 10 minutes to activate. Give that a little bit of a mix. And we're gonna leave that to get it all off there. Leave that to activate and you'll know it'll get nice and foamy and bubbly and it kind of smells funky, but you need this to activate. If this does not activate, it will not work. So we'll come back when that's ready. So as you can see, my yeast is nice and activated, has a nice bubbly top and it smells weird, but that's what you're looking for. So to that, I'm gonna add my teaspoon of salt, the rest of my sugar and the melted butter. Just give it a nice mix. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, and this may seem kind of stupid, but I'm just gonna scoop out a little bit of this flour and just kind of introduce the flour to the wet mixture so that it's easier to mix. So I'm just gonna mix this. It's no exact amount, I just take a little bit. Now into my rest of my flour, I'm just gonna take my wet ingredients and add it to my dry. And I'm gonna start off with a spatula, just kind of folding it in and then very quickly, it'll become a dough. You see how quickly that came together. Now, as you can see, my dough has all come together. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it over to my hard surface and I'm gonna knead this for five minutes until it's nice and smooth, but still tacky. If it's too tacky, add just a little bit of flour at a time until you get the smooth consistency you want because it all depends on how humid it is in your house, how hot it is, how cold it is, all those factors come into play when it comes to dough. So if it's too tacky, add more flour. If not, you're good to go. So if you have a standing mixer, knead it for five minutes until it's nice and smooth. And if not, you do it by hand on the kitchen counter like I'm about to do. So I'll see you in a minute. <laughs> so I just finished kneading the dough and you can see it's very smooth. So all I do is I just kind of pinch the bottom. I like fold the edges down and then I just make a little pinch at the bottom, flatten it out. You can see it's smooth and you can probably see how my hand just kind of sticks to it. If your hand, if it's like drawing the dough up, it's too sticky, you gotta add more flour, but this is perfect. So I have a glass bowl here and I just put a little bit of olive oil on the bottom. So I'm just gonna kind of get some of that oil on the top of the dough and around it. And we're gonna put some plastic wrap over this or you can use a damp towel, whatever you want. And we're gonna let this rise in a warm place for about an hour until it doubles in size. So I like to, Usually when I'm making something like this, I'm making something else. So right now my oven is on. So I like to place this right on top of the, um, like the stove area and it's not too hot, but it's perfectly warm and this will rise so quickly you wouldn't even believe it. So I'm gonna do that and then we'll come back when it's ready to go. As you can see, my dough has doubled in size, possibly tripled, but that's okay. That's what you're looking for. But I'm just gonna set that aside for now and we're gonna work on the baking soda mixture, which is really simple. I just have a bowl of hot water in here and I'll list all the measurements in the uh, description box. I'm just gonna dissolve my baking soda in the water. And this step is crucial in my opinion because we're gonna actually dip the pretzels in this mixture and it's gonna create that brown crispy edge that you're used to having when you have soft pretzels at the mall. So just dissolve this. We're just gonna set that aside for now while we actually work on the pretzels. So I just have a lightly floured surface here and I'm just gonna grab my dough out, flatten it out so it's easier to cut. And you wanna do this in six 
pieces. You can do um, little pretzels if you want, but I like to do six big ones. All right, I got six pieces here. They're not all exactly the same size, but who cares, right? Nobody's judging you. So I'm just gonna work on one at a time. I'm gonna start just by kind of scrunching it into a little loaf. And you wanna start rolling it out. And you're gonna want it to be at least 30 inches long. So you wanna start from the center, opening your fingers up and just kind of working your way to the outside. That way you can see it's more even. And if you have a thick spot, you can kind of just roll that side out so that it evens up. They see me rolling, they hating, patrolling and trying to catch me riding dirty. To catch me. I'd say that's good. That's about 30 inches. If you want, you can just give it a little bit of a stretch just by pulling it. You can see that's pretty darn long. <laughs> So the way to make a pretzel, I'm not gonna do the whole throw it in there, the spinny spin and the dippy do, I can't do all. So all I do is you make a horse shoe shape. Can you believe I got it right? And then you overlap the two, like the two ends, and you overlap them again, and then you take these little nubbies and you can join them right at this end. And you can have them overlap a little bit and then just kind of pinch it so that it stays, and voila, there is your soft pretzel. So now what I do, this might be a little tricky, but this is the reason I use a spatula. You can use one of those like greasing, you know, those frying spatula things. I put it on my spatula, and I go right into my water and baking soda mixture. I just make sure it gets coated for a couple seconds, and then you pull it back out, kind of just give a little shake to get any excess off. And you go right onto your baking sheet that's lined with parch parchment paper. You want to make sure that you're lining it with parchment paper because if you don't, it's going to stick like a madman. And while it's wet, I'm just going to take my salt and sprinkle that right over the top. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the rest and then we'll come right back. My pretzels are done being made. As you can see, I have six total. Now, the thing is, is when you're rolling them to 30 inches, you have to make sure you're literally doing it that long. I mean, you don't have to get a ruler, but you want them long enough because you can see this one's a lot thicker. And as it bakes, it's going to expand into the center. And those, you know, trademark holes of the soft pretzel, they will fill up and it'll just be like a knot, which is fine. But if you're trying to impress somebody and you want it to look nice, you just got to roll it out extra. So what I'm gonna do is my oven's preheated to 450. We're gonna throw these in for about 10 to 12 minutes. Try not to go too long or else it could burn the bottoms. So just until they're golden brown and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Woohoo! So now that our pretzels are in the oven, we're gonna work on our beer cheese sauce. I'm super excited about this. It takes very few ingredients and the pretzels really don't need anything, but if you want an extra little saucy addition, this would be your man. So all I have here is some butter, I have some flour, some whole milk, some beer, you can use any kind of beer you want, doesn't matter, some Dijon mustard, cheddar cheese, and cayenne pepper, garlic powder, and a little bit of salt if you need it. So the first thing we're gonna do is melt our butter down and we're gonna just make a little bit of a roux so that it'll help thicken the sauce. So I'm gonna allow that to melt and then we're gonna add the flour. Butter is melted, I'm gonna add my flour. And you want to continually stir this and just cook it for like a minute or two, just so the flour taste is cooked out completely. And I'm going to take my whisk and whisk in my milk. Get all the clumps out. Use the force. Use the force. And you can see it's already starting to thicken. We're going to add the beer. And our Dijon mustard. Cayenne. If you don't like it spicy, you can leave that out. And our garlic powder and a pinch of salt. Whisk that together. You can see this comes together very quickly. It gets thick very quickly. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add my cheese in increments. So I'll do half and then I'll do the other half. Add the last of our cheese. Make sure you're whisking it well and make sure all the cheese is fully melted. It's that type of sauce that when you look at it, you're going to go, ooh, what's that? <laughs> oh, yes. Okay, so now I'm going to go serve it up with my pretzels. 
My pretzels are out of the oven. I am so excited to eat these, I can hardly wait. But what I did was melted a little bit of butter and I'm just using a pastry brush. I'm just gonna brush them with a little bit more butter and I'm gonna add a little bit more salt. And you should do this right before you go to serve them, otherwise it could make them soggy. Who wants a soggy pretzel? Not me. Come on, be for real. Look at that. You can just see how soft that is. Man! <laughs> you gotta try this. You know you want a bite. <laughs> so if you want to try this recipe, look in the description below. I'll leave all the measurements as well as the written recipe. Please try this. And if you do, make sure you tag me on Instagram. I'll also leave the link below and right there. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye! Oh my god.